What is up YouTube? Tony here from Retro Ghost, and today we're going to be putting together a Game Boy Zero. Alright guys, so what you see here in front of you is basically a culmination of everything and anything that you would need to put together a Game Boy Zero. Specifically speaking, a Kite Retro Game Boy Zero. So over here on this side is going to be everything that you get included in Kite's kit. And the one that we're specifically going to be putting together today is going to be his Circuit Sword Lite. So he makes a few different versions of this board. Um, the Circuit Sword Lite version utilizes a Pi Zero or Pi Zero W. Um, still pretty nice in terms of capabilities. And um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and put one of these guys together today. So included with his kit, um, you're going to get the main PCB board. Um, you're going to get basically a little add-on board, volume wheel, USB. Um, you also get a back button board for L1, R1, or this other side actually incorporates an L2 and an R2 as well. Uh, we're just going to be doing an L1 and R1 setup for this build. You also get a power switch board. Comes with a little 8 ohm 2 watt speaker little heat sink for your Pi Zero, all the necessary wires and ribbon cables that you're gonna need, and of course, a nice LCD. I believe this is a, uh, I'm gonna have to look on the website, but I believe it's a 380 by something or another. I don't know, I'll figure it out later and throw it up on the screen now. So. Um, you'll also get some other things in Kite's kit, but uh, this is pretty much going to be all that I'm going to be using and utilizing in this build. Up the middle here is going to be everything that you're going to have to get on the third market or second party, third party market, however that's said. Um, you're obviously going to need a DMG shell. Uh, I went with the translucent red version for this build. I uh, got a nice glass uh, screen protector. You're going to need your button membranes. Um, so for this build, I'm going to be doing a six button layout on the front, no joysticks. So uh, just remember, you have to incorporate, you have to get as many uh, membranes as you are going to be using buttons. So um, I ended up getting four sets of main membranes for your A, B, X, Y, L, 1, R, 1, and then also my two extra buttons for the front, um, D-pad membrane and a start select membrane. You got your buttons, and again, just remember, uh, plan ahead, guys. Make sure you order as many buttons as you're going to need. Um, figure out what kind of build you want to put together first, and then uh, make sure you order enough buttons. Depending on where you get your shell from, uh, most of the sites will include a set of screws. If they don't, make sure you have a set of screws to put your two halves of your shell together. And then also a battery. Um, by the way, guys, I'll throw links down in the description everywhere I got all of my stuff from. Uh, that way, make it a little bit easier for you if you just want to go the route that I went. Um, but battery, I got a 4000 Ma um, LiPo off of Amazon, I believe. And uh, just to give you a heads up, if you do order this battery and many like it with a JST connector already attached, you have to reverse the polarity. That is very, very important before you even attempt to plug it into anything. Um, for some reason, all of these batteries coming out of China will have the polarities reversed. Um, and I've already made a video uh, showing how to reverse the polarity. It's super easy, super quick, super simple. I just really recommend just do it as soon as you get your battery, just to avoid any kind of headache later on down the road. Just go ahead and reverse polarity as soon as you get your battery in, that way you don't have to worry about it again and you can just plug and play from there. Um, and then also included in Kite's kit, you do get one of these little, um, it's like a tactile switch button. However, the one that he includes in his kit is too short. Um, so this button is actually going to be placed here on the side of the Game Boy shell. So it'll kind of stick out of the Game Boy shell like so. But the one that he includes, uh, the button is too short. It doesn't stick out far enough. So um, I went ahead and ordered a pack of these different sizes. That way I could just have some tactile switches on hand, but also uh, specifically for this build, we'll have one that is uh, comparable. 
And over here on the right hand side is going to be all of the 3D printed parts I got done up uh, specifically for this build. Um, so you have an LCD bracket. Now a lot of these brackets you can get, um, you can find a lot of them on Pseudomod. Um, I think I found these on uh, Thingiverse, uh, but again, I'll throw links in the description everywhere. I found uh, my STLs for my uh, 3D printed parts. So your LCD screen uh, bracket is basically just gonna be set in like that with your LCD uh, inserted into the back side here. Um, you got your button well bracket. Um, a lot of these LCD brackets will actually come with, an, uh, with a button bracket already attached to it but I couldn't find any with the six button layout. So I had to, I had to print them out uh, separately. And that's just gonna kind of sit right here underneath of the LCD bracket, um, just so we can have a nice neat layout for our extra set of buttons. You have, uh, well, I have here a power switch bracket. So a lot of the times when you're installing uh, Kite's power switch, it's gonna basically go into the back part of the shell here. Um, there's a lot of space. So um, it's a lot of finagling and fiddling around and hot glue to get this to sit in right. Um, this makes it a lot easier. It basically just slots right into the bracket like that. And then the bracket will sit and space it perfectly to be tacked in, two screws there, little bits of hot glue there to hold the bracket in place, and it's already spaced and ready to go. Moving on, we have a little back button board bracket. This is also going to, going to go into the back part of the case, and it basically just slides in there. Your backboard or your USB board is gonna sit right here. So that just acts as a little support for it. Um, let's see here. We also have this little uh, cartridge sled uh, kind of deal. So that's gonna sit something like that onto the back half of the board, or the back half of the shell rather. And it kind of acts as a, a cartridge sled. So um, if you end up printing up a, a 3D game cartridge like this one, um, It'll act just like a normal battery sled, so you can slide that guy in and out without any worry. Moving on, we have our L1, R1 bracket. That's just gonna slide right into the back half of the case like that. Your L1, R1 board, it's gonna sit right on top of it like so. Might have to do a little bit of modification for everything to sit down flush and everything. Um, and then you also have the uh, second half, which kind of sandwiches the board. But a really good feature um, of this piece here, um, Kite's kit also comes with two spacers to make your USB board lay flush. So um, when you put this in to the case, you have a little bit of space here. You can kind of see how that kind of is up and down. So there's two little spacers that Kite includes that he suggests you solder onto the board here. Uh, but luckily we're not gonna have to do that because this piece is going to attach just like this. So this side here actually acts as that spacer. So we won't have to do anything with that, cut out a little bit of work for us and it'll sit perfectly flush just like that on top of that 3D printed part. And then um, last but not least, we have a simple little speaker cover. Um, and just to give you a heads up guys, you don't have to get all of this stuff printed out. You can totally do this uh, without any 3D printed parts. It's just the 3D printed parts make it so much easier. And I highly recommend doing it um, or just go ahead and getting them printed up. I think I spent a total of uh, 35 bucks on all of these parts plus a few extras for another build that I'm gonna get done. Um, but the speaker cover, once you insert your speaker here, this is kind of just to put on top of it like that to give it a nice clean look. And then um, also we have a little guide for our button wells. So when you put your button bracket inserted into the shell, you can 
drop this guy in there and it acts as a guide so you can make a little pinhole uh, to know where exactly to bore out your holes on the shell for your X and Y buttons and extra buttons that you're going to be putting on. But yeah guys, uh, that's about it. Um, everything that you're going to need for the build. Um, when you get your your kit from Kite, it is not going to have a zero um, already installed. Um, that's going to be the next step of this, uh, this playlist and this video series. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to solder up the necessary wires to the zero to be inserted into Kite's board and then also how to solder on the Pi Zero to Kite's board. Um, so yeah, just uh, keep a lookout for that video coming up next. Uh, I think I break it down into two parts, but um, yeah, see you then.